Yeah, all I knew, all I knew is we were having a carry-in dinner today. <laughs> Thought it seemed a little festive for just a carry-in dinner, but I'm a little naive, I guess. I, I have some good news though for you about me. You're going to be excited about. I. <laughs> What's? I went to the dentist this week, and I have to have three teeth extracted. You know, and they put those metal, you know, things in there. Man, he's killing me. I mean, he's stretching my mouth. It's hurting something fierce. I'm thinking, my goodness. Well, he said, maybe that one's too big, so he puts another one in. And, that was, and he finally put a third one in. And finally, he said, well, you can tell your people you don't have a big mouth. <laughs> so despite what you think about preachers, I have evidence I don't have a big mouth. <laughs> Maybe a loud voice, but son-in-laws have to be quiet. <laughs> oh, anyway. <well. laughs> Matthew 4, if you have your Bibles. Uh, I don't know if you have one, that's fine. If you don't, you can hear me read, and listen, or you can grab one somewhere. Follow along out of Matthew 4. I'm going to begin in verse 18. I, I had Kurt, or you know, what, Nick, I had Nick all messed up this morning. He's trying to get the scriptures from me, and I kept giving them to him. I think I had him all confuddled with <laughs> whatever I was going with this. But in Matthew 4 and 18, <clears throat> I want to talk about obedient faith. Last Sunday, if you were here, uh, you know, we did a whole bunch of switching around backwards Sunday and that was kind of just neat and fun to do for something different. Uh, it may have disturbed you a little bit, and if it did, good for you. It's good to be disturbed once in a while. You know, it's good to not get in a rut, amen? You know, it's easy to get in a rut and just do everything the same way all the time. And, and so for a minute of inconvenience, uh, kind of an interesting time, enjoyed that. I uh, want to thank the Lord again for our praise team, all the different ones at time. I just, we do a great, I think we have a great praise team here of people. I like all the instruments, you know, I, I love the instruments. When I first came to, to fill in here and they had the drums, I'm like, yes, I love drums. You know, the Psalms, it talks about the, the cymbals. Well, that's the drum set, you know. It talks about and the stringed instruments and the guitar. And, and I was really glad when I was playing the tambourine because in the Psalms, David says, play with a timbrel. You know what a timbrel is? A tambourine. The only thing we haven't got here is dancing. Well, except Rana. Ron a kind of boogies. <laughs> We're singing, you know, she, I, I want to run back, you know, and kind of, but I'd scare you, I know. Anyway, but just thankful for all that we have God's provided here and wonderful worship and, and times together. So I, I talked about faith and uh, I want to, I said I didn't know if I'd go any further, but I'm going today on obedient faith. I shared with you there's different kinds of faith. Uh, you may not realize that in the Bible, but uh, I'll share that as we go along. This is obedient faith, and we start in Matthew 4, and verse 18, and it says, And Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, and he saw two brothers, Simon and Peter. And he called them and his brother Andrew, and they were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I'll make you fishers of men. Now, how many of you have your Bibles? You're following along with me. Okay. If I make a mistake, you'll correct me, will you? And I'll make you fisher of men. And they said, well, give us a couple of years to think about it. It didn't say that? Oh, no, it did. It, oh, and at once they left their nets and followed him. Straightway. Straightway. <laughs> Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. And they were in a boat. You know, that, that was their business, you know. And with her father, Zebedee, preparing their nets, Jesus called them, and they said, well, wait till we get everything in order here for our business, and then we'll follow you. No? Oh, he, oh immediately they left the boat. And their father even left their father and followed him. Hmm. When Jesus called his disciples to follow him, the Scripture says, immediately they left. They left the family, they left their jobs, and everything. Now, I can understand that as a pastor, because that's what happened to me. Left my brother in our business, left my family, uh, 
took my wife and a baby boy that's now a big boy <laughs> and uh, just went, went, uh, never doing what I was going to be doing ever before and follow the Lord. Now, God doesn't always call all of us, all of you, to be a pastor or a missionary and to leave your family and your friends to, and to follow him. But he does expect that when he calls us to be a follower of Christ, to, to be a Christian, he does expect us to be willing to leave the things that need to be left behind and go forward with him. Whatever that may mean. It may need, mean attitudes. It may mean ungodly friends that influence you wrongly. It may mean all kinds of things in our lives that we immediately go and follow him in his journey. Now, that's opposite of what we read in another passage in Luke. I think it's the 14th chapter, because in there, when they started asking people to follow, well, I got to go check the oxen I bought, and I got to, you know, I got married, and I got to go, you know, take care of that, and, and I bought a field, and I got to go take care of that. Totally two opposite things. Here in the scriptures, when Jesus called the disciples, they just immediately left and followed him without any reservation. And the other case was they weren't so willing to follow, and, and, and things changed in their lives because of that. Uh, faith and trust are really the same. They're really a brother and sister, because you really can't have faith if you don't trust the Lord. And you really can't trust God if you don't have faith to believe He's God and that He'll answer our prayers. Amen? In Hebrews 11, what's it say? Without faith, you can't please God. Faith said it's the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things you don't see. And for by faith, the world was made, we understand. By faith, and you read all of Hebrews 11, I mean, they just, by faith, they did this. By faith, they did this. By faith, they did this. By faith, they did, and it, just by faith, they kept doing and doing and going. Abraham was willing to kill his own son. Can't, I can't imagine that. My wife and I talked about it. We've got only one son. We have a daughter, but only one son. And I couldn't imagine God saying, just kill him. Go ahead. And, you know, I, I promised you. you know, remember, he promised Abraham. You know, God makes promises to us you know, in the Bible. And we have a right to claim the promises. We have a right to say, Lord, you said this in your word. In fact, a lot of times when I pray, that's how I pray. You know, this is God speaking to us, you understand? And so we can talk to God back by this. We can say, well, Lord, you said, you said that this would be this and this would be this. And so, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to make God, you know, do what I want him to do. But it's okay to say, well, Lord, you said in here that if I did this, you'd do this. And if I did that, and your promise was this. And God, God promised Abraham that through Abraham, he'd have a son, Isaac, and he basically would redeem the world through that lineage. Now, he promised him. Why would God then say, well, I want you to go ahead and kill him? Just take him up the mountain and knife him. Just, uh, I can't imagine that. You know, I, I would like to think of God told me that. I mean, really told me. I knew I'd do it, but I don't know. How about you? Could you do that? Hmm? I know Paul and Jody have a grandson, that, uh, a son, and our grandson thought they'd never have a son. We thought we'd never have a grandson. Now, I know Paul loves that boy. In fact, if you mess with that boy, Paul's going to have you. <laughs> and Mama right behind. I can't imagine. But see, Abraham really believed God. He believed if God promised him that He'd take care of it. If you read the scriptures in Genesis, and I'm not going to take time to do that, Abraham believed that if he actually killed his son, God would raise him up from the dead. See, that's what Abraham had, that kind of faith. He trusted God completely. And as followers, that's what we need to do. We need to be able to trust God completely, no matter what the situation looks like. See, faith and trust says, I can't see it. I don't know it. I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't know if it's going to happen, but I'm going to believe and trust God. You cannot, and I can't emphasize, there's no way to please God without having faith. You can give more money to this church, and God will be happy, but that's not what pleases Him. You could come here and clean this church, and it needs done, and people do that, but that's not what really pleases God. You can go and do this, and you can serve over there, and you can help, and, and God, and we're supposed to do that as Christians. We're supposed to serve. But what really pleases God is when I say, I trust you, God, with my life. I trust you with my children. I trust you with my grandchildren. I trust you with my finances. I trust you with my future. 
I trust you. You are a God. You want the best for me. And whether I can see it now or understand it now, no matter what I'm going through, tough times, good times, bad times, I trust you, God, that you will take care of me. That's what real faith says. In fact, John, 2 John 6 says, love is walking in obedience. See, love's the root, but obedience is the fruit. Obedience really says, I, I really believe and trust God. It's strange to me, and, and, I, and I, I think I even read this in devotion somewhere. It seemed like it was up here in my mind somewhere. That It's amazing how many Christians, quote, can trust God to forgive their sins, but can't trust Him to take care of other stuff. Isn't that something? I can say, oh, if I actually say, Lord, I'm sorry, I for forgive me, and I repent, come into my heart and life, and like forgive my sins, oh, that's great, I, I believe God did that. And then this problem arises, this situation arises out of my control, something that I don't understand, I can't handle, it's a terrible thing, and now I can't trust God. All of a sudden, oh, I don't know. I don't know if God's going to do I don't know if I can. You know, Oh, yeah, I trust Him for this, but I don't really have enough faith. Are you hearing me? Because some of you are going through tough times, and I'm trying to help you. That's what I'm here for. Pastors do that. They try to help their people. Understand, we have to see long beyond where we're at. That's why it says in Hebrews, we see things that are unseen, not with these eyes, but with these eyes. Obedience is what God wants, a willingness to, to, to separate from, from other things and follow Him completely. It says, if you love me, you'll follow me. In 1 Samuel, this is a marvelous passage. 1 Samuel 15, verse 22, listen to this. Samuel replied, does the Lord desire, delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Which is God, would God rather you just sacrifice something or obey him? Which? Would he rather you just give him, oh, you need a couple hundred dollars, I'm going to sacrifice and give it to you. Now, is that what pleases him the most? Or I'll sacrifice a couple hours this week to, to help the church or to go visit somebody. Is that what really thrills and pleases God? He says, well, does the Lord delight in, in as much as in obeying? The, to obey is better than to sacrifice. Better to obey than to sacrifice. He says, it's much better to do that than to sacrifice. And then he goes on and says, for rebellion, or the one translation says disobedience, is like the sin of divination or witchcraft. So, pure, unadulterated word of God. When you disobey God, just like practicing witchcraft. Now, none of us, I don't believe any of us in this room, would ever say, I'm going to follow witchcraft, follow the devil. But I don't think any of us. But if I disobey God, if I don't believe and trust God, it's like witchcraft. That's pretty strong stuff, isn't it? You see, all God wants is us to trust Him and believe Him. That's all He wants. Uh, we talked about Viola. You know, uh, She did that. You know, you knew her longer than we did, but for the year and a half, my wife and I knew her. She trusted God through thick and thin, and she didn't have an easy life, and she trusted God. See, nothing pleases God like obeying. If you have children or grandchildren, and you say, uh, why don't you come over here and do that, and they don't do it, how does that make you feel? You know how that works, don't you, Paul and Jody, as parents? Uh, yeah, this weekend we were together, and Ethan, come here. Come here, Ethan. And he's a, I mean, he's a sweetest, he's, he's the best thing there is outside of Jesus, and my wife and my kids, I got to put some. Uh, although my wife has got him a little ahead of me, I think, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, and, and, and But, you know, kids do have a, a little streak in them, you know. That's why it says foolishness, the Bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of the child, but the rod drives it far from them. <laughs> Amen. And uh, 
Finally, you know, daddy, daddy down here got just a little probably impatient with that not coming and grabs him up and brings him over. And of course, you know, right away, <laughs> you know. But when you say something to your child about, would you, would you go over here and do that? Doesn't that please you? And Paul and Jody, you guys are doing a, I never, you're doing a great job of raising them. And Jody says, come here, Ethan. I want to talk to you. And I love the way you handled that. And he said, now, you know, you know, when daddy and mommy say something, we, you know, we'd like you to respond and, you know, listen. And so, and they, this was cool. I'd never done this. You know, I just went ahead and beat them. I mean, uh, my kids. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> They said, let's practice. They said, let's practice this. Now, Ethan, why don't you run out, run out over there, and then Daddy will call you, and you come back right away. What do you say? Let's try that. And so Ethan went out there, and Paul says, come here, Ethan. He come running over and hugged him, and we all clapped, and we cheered, and said, wasn't that much better? Isn't that the way? I think that's the way God is, you know? I think God's saying, do this, or, or don't do that. Don't go there. And we say, okay, God, I'm going to trust you. Whatever you say. And I get this idea that God in heaven is just thrilled to death that we obeyed him, just like a parent is or a grandparent when the child says, okay, yes, daddy, yes, mama. Sometimes easier things for us to do as Christians is to do a good deed. Give a little extra money, a little extra time, you know. But sometimes to obey in our emotions and our actions. And it's a little harder to get that under control sometimes when we don't understand. Uh, you have to remember the disobedience of Adam and Eve is why sin came into the world. I'm not going to tell the story, honey. I'm going to tell the story about Adam and, or about Sister Lily, but. What's that? I don't know if I have, but I don't want the ladies to get upset with me. <laughs> I might have told it at Mother's Day or Father's Day. I wasn't here. <laughs> he wasn't here. Well, thank you for asking. Uh, it's her fault. Some of you knew Sister Lily, and we did too. And she was telling a story one time how she was, I don't know if it was a church setting or what, and she, but she was. It might have been Mother's or Father's Day or something, and she was really bragging on the women. Boy, the women and the women, and you know, the women do this and the great, and, you know, and she's just really eulogizing the women. And one of the guys says, "Well, Sister Lily, you're kind of giving it to us men because she was kind of pouring it on the men, you know." And if you knew Sister Lily, she come out and said, "I'll make it right." <laughs> Isn't that how she talked? I'll make it right. So the next time she gets up, you know, and. She's going on, and she's telling about, you know, the women in the church are always saying, you know, if it wasn't for us women, you men in the church, and it wasn't for us women, and it wasn't for us women, what would you do? She said one little old mealy mouth, and the guy stood up and said, still in the garden. <laughs> now you're sorry you asked, aren't you? <laughs> but obedient faith, and I shared last week about, you know, Peter walking on the water. I know in my earlier years, I was kind of tough on Peter. I thought, well, you joker. <laughs> you know, you're walking on the water, and then you look down and start to sink. Where was your faith? But, you know, the Lord kind of said, you need to think a little better here, preacher. He took the faith to walk on the water. I mean, he started to walk on the water. I mean, he had the faith to believe and trust God. Now, that, that took some faith, you know. I mean, I'm a fisherman. I, I can't even imagine getting out of my boat and thinking I'm going to walk in 20 foot of water. I'll be down there with the catfish chewing on me. <laughs> so he had the faith, you know, obedience to follow him. And, and he walked on the water as long as his faith kept his faith on trust on Jesus. The only time he quit walking on the water is when he looked at his, listen, when he looked at his circumstances. I guarantee you, if you look at what's going on in your life that's not good, it'll be a little tough. You've got to look beyond that to the God who can help you walk on the water. 
You got to keep your eyes, Hebrews says, fixed on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Because when his faith began to waver, he began to sink. My challenge to you, I, I mentioned different kinds of faith. There's intellectual faith. We all have intellectual faith. You know what that means? That means we all up here believe that there's a God. And he, and, he, and he had a son named Jesus, came as a baby at Christmas, grew up, and then Easter went and died on the cross, went into the grave, rose from the dead, and went back to heaven. That's intellectual faith. It's not saving faith. See, saving faith says, I not only believe it here, I believe it here. I'm going to take it from here and put it here, where I'm actually going to say, Lord, I'm sorry for sinning. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Come into my heart and life. I'm going to believe you and trust you and follow. That's saving faith. Then there's people who have no faith at all. Just no faith. Small or little faith. Some have small little. Remember, the disciples had little faith at one time because they said, increase our faith. And, of course, there is overcoming, resurrection faith. But what about obedient faith? You know, to really trust God. Can you do that for your life? I mean, really? And can we do that as a congregation? If we really believe that God is asking us to do something, whatever that may be, can we really trust Him to follow that? Or are we going to start looking at stuff <laughs> and world and situations and everything else? Is your heart open obediently to follow Jesus no matter what, where, when he asks you? I don't think any of us want to be in the category classified as witchcraft and rebellion. So how's your faith, obedient faith today? Do you need to surrender something to the Lord? And say, okay, I, I got to surrender this thing. I'm, I'm holding on to it. I'm I'm, I'm having trouble trusting and believing, but I'm just, I'm just going to put it out there. I don't know what it's going to be, how it's going to, but I'm going to trust you, Lord. Maybe you would like to come and accept Christ as your Savior this morning. Uh, have an obedient face says, okay, I'm, I'm going to take it from the head and into the heart and have saving faith. Surrender whatever that means God wants for you in your life.